Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. My name is Steve Crothers and today I'm your guest speaker. Here I'll explore some theoretical aspects of accretion power in astrophysics drawn from my latest paper, in which I have proved that the theory of stellar accretion of gaseous stars is false. This paper is the last in my trilogy on the internal constitution of the stars and their processes. Here are the previous papers. In the first I proved that the theory of nuclear reaction in gaseous stars is false. In the second, I proved that the theory of ultra-dense compact objects such as white dwarfs and neutron stars is false, and that the Chandrasekhar limit does not exist. These two papers have been discussed respectively in these two previous Sky Scholar presentations. Collectively, these three papers prove that the stars are not gaseous. Consequently, the stars must be condensed matter, as Dr. Rabatai has argued for many years in his papers and online lectures. There are two foundations to the theory of stellar accretion, the ideal gas law and the laws of thermodynamics. In any thermodynamic mathematical expression, it's necessary that the units on each side must be the same, and so too the thermodynamic character. If the expression is not thermodynamically balanced, it's invalid, even if the units balance. Dr. Robitaille and I have covered this, in, this topic in detail in this paper. Temperature is an intensive thermodynamic coordinate. Mathematically, it is a homogeneous function of degree zero. Mass is an extensive thermodynamic coordinate. Mathematically, it is a homogeneous function of degree 1. Pure numbers and physical constants have no thermodynamic character. If temperature is given a non-intensive character, then it's a false relation. If mass is given a non-extensive character, then it's a false relation. Some thermodynamic coordinates are neither intensive nor extensive. Luminosity is an example. Now consider equation 3.14 from the book by Frank King and Rain. It relates the Coulomb potential energy of two charged particles to kinetic energy at closest approach. There are two major errors here. First, the middle and far right terms relate the mean square speed of ideal gas particles to the gas temperature. The particles of an ideal gas, however, are not charged, and there are no forces at all between them except when they collide elastically with one another in the walls of their container. So the ideal gas law can't be used for charged particles. Secondly, their equation assigns a temperature to Coulomb potential energy, but potential energy has no temperature and can't contribute to temperature, so their equation is false. Nevertheless, they use this equation to calculate a mean free path between collisions of charged particles at their equation 3.16. Since their equation 3.14 for charged particles is false, so too is their mean free path equation. The astronomers and astrophysicists combine the kinetic theory of an ideal gas with gravity using the Virial theorem and deduce equations that stand in violation of the kinetic theory in the, in the laws of thermodynamics. Consider this equation for what Carol and Ostley call, on page 448 of their book, the gravitational potential energy of a spherical gas cloud of constant density. They then invoke this equation for the total kinetic energy of n ideal gas particles. Using the Virial theorem, they combine these two equations to calculate the condition for their gas cloud to gravitationally collapse, in other words, to compress itself, at their equation 12.5. First, since there are no forces between the particles of an ideal gas, except when they collide elastically with one another in the walls of their container, there is no gravitational potential energy. Secondly, the left side of their inequality is extensive, that is, homogeneous degree 1, but the right side is not extensive because it is homogeneous degree 1 and 2 thirds. Thirdly, solving their expression for temperature gives this inequality, which reveals that Carroll and Ostley assign a temperature to gravitational potential energy, when in reality potential energy has no temperature. Fourthly, gases never compress themselves by any means. Consequently, their inequality 12.5 for the condition of self-compression of a gas is false. Nevertheless, they calculate from their false inequality the critical mass of a gas cloud to compress itself, called the Jeans mass, at their equation 12.7. Mass on the left side is extensive, but the right side is intensive, making this equation thermodynamically unbalanced, so it's invalid. The Jeans mass does not exist. In his book, Eddington, in similar fashion, combined the kinetic theory of an ideal gas with gravity to find stellar temperature at his equation 58.3. Here the constant beta is the, is the quotient of the gas pressure to the total pressure. Mu is the molecular weight in terms of the hydrogen atom, R is the universal gas constant, and phi is the gravitational potential. First, the left side of Eddington's equation is intensive, but the right side is extensive, so it is thermodynamically unbalanced. Secondly, Eddington assigns temperature to gravitational potential energy when potential energy has no temperature. Hence, his equation is false. Chandrasekhar commits the same fatal mistake. In his book, he gives the mean temperature for a gaseous configuration in equilibrium in which the radiative pressure is negligible at his equation 48. 
This expression is not only thermodynamically unbalanced, it also assigns temperature to gravitational potential energy, so it too is false. The theory of gravitational collapse of a gaseous cloud to form stars and ultra-dense objects such as white dwarfs, neutron stars and black holes is false. The Eddington limit luminosity is, according to Frank, King and, R and Rain, given by their equation 1.3. Here sigma sub t is the Thomson cross-section, where the kinetic energy of matter falling into a star becomes radiation at the star's surface, the accretion luminosity, according to equation 1.5 of Frank, King and Rain, is given by this relation. By the Stefan Boltzmann law, luminosity divided by surface area is intensive. Consequently, the Eddington limit and the accretion luminosity equation are both invalid. Nevertheless, these luminosities are equated to obtain an accretion rate given by this equation. This equation is invalid owing to the invalidity of the luminosity equations. According to Bowers and Deeming, the post-shock wave temperature of an optically thin ideal gas spherically accreting onto a star is given by this equation. The left side of this equation is homogeneous degree zero, but the right side is homogeneous degree two thirds. In addition, it assigns temperature to gravitational potential energy. Consequently, it's false. For adiabatic gas inflow, these same authors assert that the accretion rate is given by this equation. Here, R sub G is the so-called Schwarzschild radius this equation is invalid. Indeed, solving for temperature gives this equation. The left side is intensive, but the right side is homogeneous degree two-thirds, so it's invalid. At their equation 17.15, Carroll and Ostley give the temperature of an accretion disk as a function of the radius of the annulus by this equation. Once again, the left side is intensive, but the right side is not, so the equation is false. Taking into account a supposed thin turbulent boundary layer, Carol and Ostley give the accretion disk temperature at their equation 17.16. Yet again, the left side is intensive but the right side is not, so the equation is false. At their equation 5.43, Frank, King and Rain claim that for the steady state optically thick black body thin disk approximation, the disk temperature is a function of annular radius given by this equation. Here, capital R is the annular radius and capital R sub star is the stellar radius. This equation is thermodynamic unbalanced once again, so it's invalid. Notwithstanding, according to these same authors, the approximate spectrum of each element of the accretion disk is given by this equation. This equation is also false because the function T of R is false. Going still further, these authors assert that the flux is given by the equation 5.45. Yet again, since the function T of R is invalid, this flux equation is false. The theory of galaxy formation and evolution is afflicted by the same malaise. For example, in their book, Binney and Tremaine assert, at their equation 9.38, that the critical temperature for the collapse of a protogalactic cloud is given by this expression. They combine the ideal gas law with gravity and apply the Virial theorem to obtain a Virial temperature at their equation 9.40. In both of these equations, the left side is intensive, but the right side is extensive, and gravitational potential energy is assigned to temperature. These equations are therefore invalid. The violations of the kinetic theory of gases and the laws of thermodynamics are so numerous in the theory of gaseous stars and galaxies that I can't reveal them all here, so I refer you to my paper for details. But in closing, here is a final example of violations of the laws of thermodynamics. According to Bhattacharya, Misra and Data, in the case of disk irradiation by a neutron star, the disk temperature is given by this equation. Note that the disk temperature is the sum of the effective temperature and the irradiation temperature. But temperature is intensive, so it's not additive. Consider two bricks with temperatures T1 and T2 respectively. Now join the bricks together to form one mass. At equilibrium, the final temperature is not the sum of the two initial temperatures. The authors, the editors of the Astrophysical Journal, and the peer reviewers of this paper don't even understand the basics of thermodynamics, and neither do the textbook writers. No wonder the theory of gaseous stars is false. The stars are condensed matter. Well, that is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, promote the channel. Mention the videos to your friends and to your local astronomy club. Support with a like or subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below and we'll see you soon in the next video.